So let's go over how to incorporate a quote properly. So many of you did a nice job adding those quotes in the in your essays, but simply offering a quote from the text is not enough to support a claim that you are making. You need to make that extra step and elaborate on the quote. Why is it in there and what it means and how it relates to your main idea and the claim that's being made. You need to connect your dots to your, dots to your reader. Don't assume that they understand the point you're trying to make. Don't assume that, assume that the quote speaks for itself, okay? Um, you want to maybe assume that your reader hasn't read the story. And so you are the one who's responsible for making sure that your reader understands the points that you're trying to make. Okay. Um, as you're completing this, if you want to look at this handout that's in the, on your slides, make sure that you do that and explains how, what, how to write a strong formal body paragraphs. And we're going to look at some color coding here. Okay. Um, Let's look at how you would properly incorporate this into to the text. So we have our topic sentence here. Beowulf is a perfect example of a hero. He is a fearless warrior. Okay, so we start in and we lead into the quote. Beowulf goes into battles with a bold mindset, even though he could potentially get hurt. Okay, so we're leading into the quote. Then we have the quote here. No weapons, therefore, for either this night, unarmed, he shall face me. And then we add our author, Haney, lines 683 to 685. Okay, then we follow up with this. In the scene, while Beowulf is getting ready to fight Grendel, Beowulf decides to not use weapons while fighting Grendel. Beowulf wants to battle Grendel fairly, which is brave of him because Grendel is a monster while he is a human. Okay, so we have that evidence that connects the dots for your reader as to why your quote is in the text, is in the body paragraph. But then you also need to make sure that you add more than just one quote because you want to, one quote does, will not suffice to prove a point. You need at least two. So we have here, another representation of Beowulf's fearlessness is shown during Grendel and Beowulf's combat. Okay, so we're leading into the next quote. The alert heroes come back and Armlock Force stalled him utterly. Okay, so we have this. And then we have our, our properly MLA cited material, Haney 747 through 748. Evidently, Beowulf is courageous. He holds back the monster by himself so he won't hurt anyone. The, all right, so we are connecting those dots as to why the quote was within the text. And then we round out, the, the, then we conclude the paragraph. The actions Beowulf does define what a brave hero he is. Okay, so when you are, create, you're going to create your own paragraph. And when you do this, you're going to revise the paragraph that is given here. And the student says, not everyone has the trait of bravery. Then down the brave man lay his bolster under his head and his whole company of sea rovers at rest beside him. This part of the passage comes right out and calls Beowulf brave. However, Beowulf is brave because he went into, ba went into ba battle with Grendel with no weapons. No weapons, therefore, for either this night unarmed he shall face me, if face me he dare. Okay, so you're going to revise this so you have that lead-in and then that explanation of the quote within your paragraph, and then you conclude the paragraph. And you'll need to make sure that you, that you cite your sources correctly by giving the last the author, the, the translator's last name, and then the line numbers in which you find the, um, the quote, okay? Um, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask.